Hello, everybody. It's me, Pacific. Sorry for the total interruption. I heard a scratch outside the door, and the people that I rent with, the doggy came out. I thought, oh, man, cut, cut. Dog has to do its daily constitutional. So she says to me, you know, Pacific, we do not yet know, but what if she could get you to the Philippines? We could start a business, and I said, you know, I don't have the kind of capital to do all that. And I said, you know, there, there's so many things to think about. She goes, one step at a time, what if I can get you? I admit, viewers, <clears throat> I have nothing but doubt all up in my head. I think you can't just blow through immigration. Philippines has its problems. But what if she did get me accepted through with residency? And there is a big part of me that says, oh my gosh, leave America, go to the Philippines. And the first thing that hits me is, you're going to have one hard life over there, dude. You ain't going to be driving a bus. You're going to be in hot, hot, hot weather. Just these two weeks of 90s, upper 90s, Denver, Colorado, with dry, non-humid heat. And I'm having a little bit, getting a little tired of it. And I remember my week in Miagao and Iloilo in the Philippines, laying there in bed and roosters crowing and dogs barking and how hot it was. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh. But then I thought, but it didn't bother you. You didn't have to get up at 4.30 and go to work then. <clears throat> you guys started your own business. You set your own hours. Right away, I thought my standard of living would be totally different. That <clears throat> probably wouldn't have air conditioning. And I thought of all the negatives, but then I thought, but you'd have your freedom. That you two would either sink or swim, and it'd be one hell of an adventure. I admit, viewers, it's tempting. She's a beautiful woman. I know her, and I think that a life with her would not be so problematic. <clears throat> I got to know her, and I asked her one question. I said, do you love me? She goes, I've always loved you, but when you were here, your heart was turned by other people, and you didn't believe that we could be together, and you were going through your own thing, but you know what? I've met men in my life, and yes, I do love you. And there's a part of me that says, wow, somebody loves me enough to try to get me to their homeland. I said, all right, see what you can do. In my American mind, I think of all the complications, the what ifs. Part of me says, what if she pulled it off? Would you really do it? I have said to people, <clears throat> half serious, half jokingly, I'd rather die in Asia than in America. I have my doubts. You don't just blow through immigration. You don't do that stuff. Why am I bringing this up? Because my head was swirling the last couple days going, what if you had your chance to go to the Philippines? <clears throat> yes, it's hot. Yes, it's this. But would you turn it down? Would you stay here? As I went to bed last night, something hit me so hard, and I thought, what do I have here? I have a job that's uncertain. We get into an accident that's our fault, or whatever. You can be fired. <clears throat> so, as far as job security and my job, we don't have it. I have no health benefits or insurance in my job. I just make pay, which I'm thankful for. I have a good place to live and stay that's peaceful. I woke up this morning just feeling so in heaven, just for a nice, quiet, peaceful night's sleep. I wake up, hear the crickets outside the window, and I go, you know, God, no money can buy you a good sleep. I think of hotels and people paying $300 a night for a hotel, and then they tell me they couldn't sleep all night. And I said, well, you wasted a lot of money, didn't you? Things that you just can't put value to that are highly valuable more than gold is a good night's sleep is peace of mind 
a good simple meal and knowing you got some control of your world you're not in debt you're not caught up in all the media blitzkrieg that most americans are that you've got to have this and got to have that and live the stressful treadmill i go to the workout club i have a dog i have an suv i'm in debt i'm running here i'm running there no thanks but i went to bed last night and i thought where am i going to go to church this weekend that church I commented on, I'll go because the preaching is good. But then I, I told a lady friend of mine at work, she's the one that actually told me about that church. <clears throat> she is, she has Costa Rican blood in her, but she never was born and raised in Costa Rica. But she's mostly Mexican, but <clears throat> she's different than the Mexicans around here. Excuse me. I caught a strange summer cold, so yes, I'm getting over it, and that combined with some of the allergies lately, I apologize. I told her, I said, you know, the preaching is good over there, but I said, I will never make connections. I said, there, it's a white, lily class, comfortable church. I said, you look at the way I dress. I walk in with jeans and a t-shirt, and nobody's going to ever accept me. And she goes, you know, I stopped going there, because I go to one up the hill from there, and she goes, but it's kind of the same thing. She goes, yeah, there is no cultural diversity. I said, there's none. I said, remember when I was dating that Asian gal and I brought her there? And I said, people were definitely looking at us thinking that you traitor. What are you doing with a non-white? <clears throat> I'm not going to get on a church bashing thing, but it just hit me. I have no solid, deep roots or foundation. Yes, my son is out here. and That is important. But due to circumstances with the ex-wife, due to the fact he's a teenager, there's a lot of things that I really have no control of. The ex-wife is thinking about moving to Texas, and with all the trouble I've had with her, deep down inside I'm going, oh, that would be marvelous, please. I think Texas will love you. But that's a cop-out on me, I admit. But I stop and think. <clears throat> can something really come true? Can a dream come true? You know, there is no grass is greener on the other side. Bern Yender makes a video saying that women are problems even overseas, and he's right. I have failed to tell you of the few that I did date, Filipinas, that became ugly, hideous individuals towards me and towards others, and I was shocked because I had believed that it was just our culture and women that were monsters. Viewers, they have them over there. You must be careful. This idea you're going to find your dream boat woman over there, you got to go through some stuff to get to the one. But it is easier to find a good woman over there than it is in America. That is a fact. But there are gold diggers and, and contentious women over there too, and you need to guard your hearts. And it hit me last night, you know, if she did, was able to process me to go over there, I would do it. It would be great risk to myself. I could lose everything. I'd end up selling my truck and I could die and languish in the heat and live the rest of my life with diarrhea and who knows what. And then there's a part of me that said, but what if you guys made it? You put an air conditioner unit in your bedroom so you can at least sleep at night. You can endure the heat of the day. You've done it before in Hong Kong. What if? Wouldn't it be nice <clears throat> to go and visit Hong Kong and slap down a Philippine passport and have all the people looking at you like, Philippine? Wouldn't it be nice <clears throat> to be free from the bondage that is in our culture? I think Pyramid left the comment. <clears throat> If it isn't you, I apologize. Something about if you're single, it's a ghost town for us in the U.S. It is true. You can move anywhere in this country. And if you don't have a group of friends to hang out with or a girl on your arm, American society pretty much ignores you. You go to most churches and you get cold treatment. What do I have to look forward to? I told myself this week, do not look at the dating sites anymore. Do not, in your desperation to wanting to be with somebody on a three-day weekend, Labor Day weekend, don't. Just deal with it. 
it hasn't worked anyway. <clears throat> By the way, the black woman that we went, to, I took out to lunch that I thought was classy and nice. After the lunch, she sent me a thank you and blah, 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 and disappeared. There is no getting around it. <clears throat> I listen to people in the break room at work that are really not hot looking and all that. And you hear them saying, well, I wouldn't date a younger guy. And I wouldn't this. And you stop and look. But is that woman herself really a find? And the answer is no. <clears throat> there was one I thought was very, and I still think she's beautiful. When I sat by her to talk to her, one of the first things I noticed, rank body odor. And I'm like, I would not be able to get around that. Oh, but that same woman asked me, she said to me this week, do you notice every time you come over and talk to me that that other girl's always trying to get your attention? I said, yes. It's a white woman who's much older than me. Not my physique style. She's heavy. She's she's older. I'm sorry to be gross, but everything's sagging. Not my type. <clears throat> Her hair's gray. <clears throat> I'm still young. I want somebody who's young looking. She goes, yeah, but I think she's interested in you. I said, I know she is, but I said, I'm not interested in her in that way. She says to me, I thought you only go after the heart. And I said, I do, but I said, I have to be sensually attracted to them too. And I said, tell me that you're not guilty of the same. And this is what she said to me. No, I agree with you. <clears throat> if I'm not physically attracted to a guy, I'm, I said, see. We're all guilty of it. This idea that I only choose a guy or gal for their heart, that's not entirely true. <clears throat> Guys, we have a sex drive. If our sex drive isn't moved, deal's off. Let's just call it what it is. <clears throat> so, next issue. One of the women in the break room, who I call the meanest of the bunch, she thinks she's all that in a bag of chips. Mexican woman, long hair. She's lost a lot of weight. I was very impressed with that. And she came over and I told her some silly little joke. And her comment was this. Oh, that's a typical stupid white boy's joke. And I said, wow, that's racist. She goes, I'm not racist. I have five color TVs in my house. And I said, you know, that's lame. She goes, oh, but that's funnier than your joke. And then I jokingly said, I said, do you love me? I called her by name. She goes, Honey, I don't love anybody. I said, do you even like me? <clears throat> she goes, I don't like anybody in this room. <clears throat> the woman is loud. She thinks she can kick everybody's arse. She's had me massage her back and shoulders. I don't have the hots for her. But when I've massaged her, there's nothing there. A lot of skin and bones. A lot of flab. And I thought, boy, this woman thinks she's tough. But just massaging her, there's, there's no mass there. Nothing. I thought, man, if she were to come after me, as long as... She, course there's no hair to pull I thought I could definitely get the advantage of her <clears throat> and I said to her I said you don't like anybody I said how about me you asked me to get stuff out of your vehicle every day to bring into the break room you you talk to me I I said let me ask you this <clears throat> I can't mention her name here but I said if I was on the side of the road after work and out of my vehicle and bleeding or whatever would you stop help me she goes I'd call 911, but that's about all I'd do. I said, you wouldn't even get out and see if I was all right? <clears throat> she said this in front of everybody, and several people in there were kind of like, whoa, Pacific's taking this woman on. And I wasn't rude. I said, the next day she came in, she goes, so you all butthurt over that? I said, I'm not butthurt. But I said, I'm shocked at the depth of your callousness is equal to that of a Los Angeles gang member. I lived in L.A. and I grew up in L.A. And I said, you're very callous, very jaded. She goes, well, I'm just honest. She goes, the only people I care about is my, my daughter and my family. And every one of them are very rude. They're all employed there, and, except the husband. And <clears throat> the daughter's rude and fat. Her sister's rude and fat. And they get away with murder in that place that the rest of us would be called into the office and suspended for. <clears throat> Even in a big place where I work, it is amazing how much favoritism goes on and how much bosses and supervisors overlook the sins and faults and unpolitically correct moves of others in the workplace. And I've said this before, women get away with a lot in the workplace. 
a man says and does the things these women do, we would be fired. But these women do it, and they do it all the time, and they get away with it. Yesterday, I had a bus driver who's been there 20 years. She's a sawed-off runt of a woman. And I say that because she's very rude, very unprofessional, crusty, shorter than me. <clears throat> she thinks because she's driven there 25 years, she's superior to everybody. And it's like, lady, I have experience outside this place. I have my own seniority. Don't play that with me. I don't talk to her. <clears throat> She jumped over a lane and drove through a left turn lane to pass me. I thought, what is she doing? And we're going to the terminal, the park. And there's a few blocks to go, and I put my signal on, and she's trying to race me. I'm already up to 30, and she's speeding. And I'm like, who is driving that bus? I'm going to turn that person in. And then I look in my mirror, and I see her face, and I thought, oh, my gosh. It's shorty. Finally, she sees my turn signal, and she throws up her hands like this, and she's just acting out behind the wheel. And I'm like, what is her problem? <clears throat> she doesn't let me in, so I start to slow down. She finally dynamites the brakes. I continue up to 30, and I finally make a late, safe lane change. Went in and talked to one of the trainers, who's not afraid of anything. Told him what happened. I said, I don't want to write up a report, but what is that all about? This was his comment to me. Oh, there's no talking to her. Nothing's going to happen to her. I said, but that, he goes, Pacific, I know this. I know her, and I know that when anybody's had to talk to her, I said, oh, she's got seniority things. Don't tell me what to do. I said, but, but that's a violation of company policy. The, one of the company policies is you're supposed to let the buses in, and you are never supposed to pass another school bus that's going to speed limit, ever with or without children on board. Just the basic courtesy lack. In my workplace every day, I meet women that come out the door, walking up the steps to the door, to walk two inches from me, will not say hello to me. They're rude, they're uncouth. They're, there's one Mexican woman with long hair, beautiful body, but she's got acne all over her face. I mean, it is severe. She thinks she's all that in a bag of chips, never says hi to me, never says hi to several of us guys, and I thought, Wow, I don't say hi anymore to these people. And we're getting a young group of women that are overweight, covered with tattoos and piercings here and piercings there and everywhere. And one skinny, very good-looking Hispanic woman with long hair comes in. Her arms look at her axis. She's dropped it. Gorgeous. Nice tatas. Got tattoos all down her arms. And she thinks she's all that in a bag of chips. <clears throat> what does all this have to do with just this week? And just this week, I go from this culture to this culture, to this break room, to this church, to this busload of students, to being out in a culture of traffic, going through the yuppie neighborhoods in Stapleton, which used to be Denver's airport, which is now a yuppie community, and watching yuppies think that signs and rules don't apply to them, and you honk the horn and they get all mad, and you know they pull out their phone and they're going to call on you. This is no joke, people. I'm in a commercial motor vehicle, and if you honk at somebody, not lay on it, but just honk, they pull out their phone, and they're going to call and turn you in for road rage. Um, road rage? I'm honking because you are parked, blocking the way. I watch these yuppie mothers and yuppie fathers with their bicycles. There's traffic all at a major intersection, and they just, they don't stop, and look, that car was there, that car, and wait. They just roll out. Buses are trying to get out of the school. There's even security officers directing us. And the mothers just grab their kids and step out in front of us. And I'm thinking, yuppies obviously think that the whole world revolves around them. I am in a different culture, literally, from one hour to the next. Go into the break room. It's Hispanic, black, and only two or three Asian people. Go to church, and it's a lily white culture. Go to where I live here with elderly people. That's a culture. And at the end of the day, I come away with this. There is nobody who has my back. You'd be a fool, Pacific, if somebody opened a door for you to live in the Philippines, even though it'd be hard. Wouldn't it be nice to die trying to live the dream and getting out from here and being with a woman who cares for you, who is not bad on the eyes, who's your age, who's got dance, who's got soul, who's got passion, 
why would you turn that down and stay comfortable here and die daily being alone and alienated in this culture that's going down the toilet if she made it happen viewers you'll be seeing videos made from the other side provided I have internet <laughs> provided I have time I might have to take my laptop down to the internet cafe to upload but it would be worth it it is a ghost town pyramid head it is a ghost town and Christians are worried about finding a demon behind every bush he even said that somebody attacked him for his ID didn't even register with me viewers <clears throat> I actually have care for a lot of you I'm unable to physically make that known because of distance and it is YouTube but I get to know you through your comments and I start praying for certain of you God encourage this person help this person through their struggles and it hits me that there's a lot of hurting lonely people a lot of us men have been damaged and wounded and women don't seem to care about that all they want to do is lick and nurse their wounds for the next 30 years they have a bad experience they want to post it on a billboard on I-25 and want the whole world to know that they've been maltreated by a man some of us men are the walking wounded we've been deeply cut deeply hurt <clears throat> But we're taught in this culture, get up, go to work, grit your teeth, deal with it. We're not allowed to cry, and there's no shoulder for us guys to cry on. Women complain that men are not sensitive and men don't like to communicate. Then they meet me, who is sensitive and likes to communicate. And they tell me, you know, you talk too much, you're, 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 you're too nice. And yeah, I know, you like jerk males. <clears throat> we're going to do a video one day on alpha female, alpha male. Pacific deliberately sticks his finger right in the eye and kicks over the can of gas with alpha females. I do it all the time. One of the ways I do it is I make comments to somebody else, not about that person, but about stuff I know will make them mad. I call it indirect preaching. One day I was standing outside a bus and one of these gals who thinks she's all that, who's 20-something, rude, can't say hi to everybody, got her little chi-chi showing and think she's hot stuff she never says hello it was the bus aide of one of the drivers and he is a Christian and we were talking about things and I said you know these young people today you know the 20 something year old think they're all that in a bag of chips and I'm going on and on and all of a sudden this woman's buried in her text messaging and all of a sudden she's kind of looking around and <clears throat> she's visibly getting uncomfortable because she's only 10 feet away from us and I'm guilty I deliberately said it's like she'll never listen to me but she's hearing my conversation and I said these young people are stuck up jerks they're rude they have no manners and when they get old one day nobody's gonna be looking at them going wow she's hot and I said and they they they're just not the way we were when we were growing up this is a black guy who worked on fishing boats in Alaska it's been around he's got his own beautiful children and he's a very nice person and he's got a bus aid who's a little hot snot I'm sick of our culture. In one week, you go into our break room and there's personalities in there. They have no conviction. They have no shame. I think of that woman's daughter. She's very offensive. She made a comment one day to me about my Coke bottle glasses and I put my hands down on the table and I said, don't, don't say stuff like that because that's inappropriate. Well, I said, not well. And I wanted to say, if I said what I thought about you, you'd be in there whining all the way to the upper management. I wanted to say you're a fat biatch, you're ugly as hell, your heart is ugly as hell, and you think you're all that? Look in the freaking mirror. We can't say what we need to say, men, but women can say and mouth off and do what they want. Women, you can say whatever you want about my videos, but it is a fact. You guys get away with murder. Feminism has turned this culture upside down, and feminism does have the upper hand. I don't want to hear one more gripey, carping, whiny, stupid nonsense about us males. 
women rule in America. That is a fact. And one of the things that just hit me this week is you have nothing. You have a job, you have a paycheck for now. And there's certain little satisfactions I get in the way. I was rejoicing that it rained. I like the kids that make me smile. You know, and I like diversity, but then I go to our break room and I see some of the trailer trash additions of that diversity in the Hispanic community, in the African community, the white community, and I go, you know, why would I want to die in this country? Why would I want to live and be surrounded by this? Why do I want to go to church on Sunday and not even be made to feel like I truly am part of the family of God? I'm sorry, folks. I think I have an accurate view of myself. I'm not ugly. I'm not GQ. But I look at these women with this attitude. I'm like, but they're not all that either. They're average. They're average looking people. And I hear preachers go on and on about this. And it's the women. Yes, Jesus. Amen. And I go, are they just getting caught up in the emotional euphoric crapola? Or do they really believe what he's saying? Because I don't see it in a loving attitude. I was on the phone with my sister this, just this week, talking to her outside the break room. And I made a comment, not about anybody in the break room, but a comment about women to my sister. My sister and I get along. It was not against her. This self-righteous Christian I told you about, the one that shows all her cleavage, who runs a sound machine at her church, ignores 90% of us there, and very self-centered, very near herself, got princess stickers all on the inside of her bus. She walks out and mouths off to me. Not all of us are like that, thank you very much. I turned around and said, I'm on a private conversation, and I'm not talking to you. Didn't matter. My sister says, who's that? I said, uh, another employee mouthing off. She goes, wow. I said, you know what? It is a landmine at this workplace. It is a landmine. I was sitting in my truck in the parking lot. I was dating that Asian gal. It was hot. I had my shirt off. She was leaning against me. And one of the employees in the came into the break room last fall and said loudly, man, I saw you sitting in your truck with your shirt off. You know, you can get in trouble for that. I said, no, I can't. I'm in my pickup truck. But you're on company property. And I said, so blast it out of the break room so everybody knows and get me in trouble. Oh, no, I'm just saying to warn you to protect you because I know how they are around here. When, when I see what our culture does all day, I sit there and go, and you're worried about whether you can make it in the Philippines? Dude, every day you're at risk here that somebody could slam you, somebody could get you fired, somebody could slander you, somebody could run you out on a rail. What's the worst could happen in the Philippines? What's the worst? Be a little harder? You got a woman to go to that wraps her arms around you? You got a woman who's going to support you? A woman who believes the husband's the head of their house? A woman who will do anything for you? Dummy, if she gets it done, you pack your stuff and get out. You have no reason to stay. America hasn't given you any reason to stay. I wish Social Security would come up with an idea. I wish they would agree to make a lump sum payout if we choose to take it and then we opt out of the program. Like say I had $50,000 due of Social Security entitlements. Give it to me now and let me manage it. They'd never do it, but it'd be a great idea. <sighs> My heart is so heavy. I get up happy-go-lucky. Several of the people at work said, what are you going to do this weekend? I said, today I'm going to put up a fence. But I said, not much. This is the following when I asked other women what they were going to do. Oh, I'm going to watch TV for three days and sleep all day. Wear my pajamas around the house all day. And I thought, that's invigorating. That just gives me so much incentive and makes me want to jump up and go, yes! Others are going to party. One woman had it right. I got to do laundry, got to do my household duties, and I got to help my children with their homework. I thought, well, she's closer to reality than the rest of them. People know I'm outgoing and energetic, 
and then they're shocked when they say, you don't have anybody to hang out with? I said, people aren't very nice in this culture. I said, you guys are all busy. And there's some nice people. I played cards with some of my fellow drivers this week. We played at Uno. Is that fun to watch people? Here, here's a draw four. Well, thanks. <laughs> I love that game. It's awesome. Just this week. This is the spectrum of what I go through. Take off my shirt, get in my truck, leave work every night. Go to Walmart on Friday, get my groceries, go home, throw in my once a week load of laundry. Cook two pork chops, two baked potatoes. Got some black beans and some green beans. Got an egg over easy. Listen to some music. And at 8.45, tired, exhausted. And I go to bed. And it's peaceful. I go to bed thinking, if that woman brings you, you get up and go. I doubt she will get it done. But sometimes in certain places, if you know somebody on the inside, they're able to work magic. I don't want anything illegal. I don't want any BS documents produced. But if somebody can do it, I'm out of here, viewers. And I would gladly and joyfully, with sweat running down my forehead, make videos for you to see on the other side. I have my doubts. I live in this world right now. And I will continue to comment on this world. Women, I have a message for you if you're listening. You need to stop. You need to look in the mirror and you need to start asking yourself a question. Do you really believe you get up perfect every day? Do you really believe you're not committed, co contributing to the garbage in our culture? You most certainly are. You're causing collateral damage. You're rude. You're mean. And you're wondering why us men are starting to speak out. It's the same reason you spoke out when you didn't have the right to vote. You felt men were becoming oppressive. Well, you guys are becoming oppressive. <clears throat> it's come full circle. I don't like alpha females. It's a contradiction of this. Total contradiction of this. Speaking of alpha female, Joyce Myers would represent an alpha female. She doesn't submit to this book. She pulled in $92 million in 2005. She talks like a man, walks like a man, and talks with authority. Got a bunch of insecure little men sitting under her, feeding on her garbage. I don't care for Joyce Myers. I think she's a wolf in sheep's clothing. She's a woman that's rebellious and will never submit to anything, let alone God or her own husband. And I believe they have a 25,000 square foot home on a private golf course as well. Ridiculous. Okay, this is just this week. Part two, the specific signing off. Bye-bye.